deep in the heart of Central Texas, it's the best of the outdoors podcast. Brought to you by Texas Fishing Game Magazine, the voice of the Texas Outdoor Nation. I'm your humble host, Dustin Vaughn Warnke, associate publisher, contributing editor, podcast host, let me think, uh, Hot Spots editor for the Fishing Reports with the Freshwater uh, Lakes, and uh, geez, I, I wear a lot of hats around here, but man, do I have fun doing this show. This is therapeutic for me to turn on this microphone and speak into it every two weeks, and for you guys to listen, it just makes my socks go up and down. It just absolutely makes my day that you guys listen to this stuff, and uh, I just love creating media. I love creating anything, articles and blogs and podcasts and videos and all that stuff, and if you stay tuned to my YouTube channel here lately, I've been putting out, obviously, every one of these podcasts goes out uh, live on there. Um, not live, but I mean, as we release them, they go, uh, they go on there as YouTube releases, and I, somebody left me a comment this week that I'm recording this uh, bumper for uh, for this episode. Uh, and it was earlier this week, and, and it was one of the last shows that I posted, actually the last show that I posted uh, on the series of this show, and that was the iCast Live at iCast 2019 uh, with Chester and Cal. He, he said, and I won't mention names here or whatever, but he, his, his channel's a music channel, and he said, everything you post is fire. You know, and that just made my day. I mean, I posted a screen cap of that on my Facebook page, and a lot of people commented on it, you know. Um, but just just that he thought that everything I post is fire as far as my video and podcast content on the uh, on the YouTube channel. And that just, ah, oh my, I just, I love it. So thank you guys so much for your support and uh, for listening and for reading our stuff, for watching our videos, for um, listening to these podcasts. And go back because every time we release one of these podcasts the title of the podcast is the subject matter of the podcast i try to do a hunting and fishing show every other show um so basically every you know one show do hunting one show do fishing and then alternate those every other show and uh you know just have a lot of fun doing this and the guest that i have for you today is a new guest to the best of the outdoors family uh mike wilson dr mike wilson uh, medical doctor as well as a deer breeder and uh, we're going to talk about deer biology we're going to talk a little bit about uh, hunting deer hunting exotics uh, the the kind of stuff that he has through Wilson Wildlife which is his company and um, and farm or, or I guess is be for like a better word deer farm that he has um, for raising whitetail and uh, just really something different for you this this summer because you know we're entering deer season here in the next couple of months um a lot of us are already getting everything ready for that i know i am i'm getting my my uh my stuff all restocked and uh and sharpened and ready to go and um i'm just having a lot of fun in the outdoors and i wanted to bring somebody that was different on this show you don't run into too many medical doctors that happen to be deer breeders as well so uh dr mike is just a great guy i love the conversation we have together we have a blast on the show and i think you're really going to enjoy it uh, and what we have to offer to you today so before i get into that Please, if you've not done so already, subscribe to this podcast. You get a free new show every two weeks. You don't have to pay anything for this. Sponsors pay for this, okay? So you get a free new show. You get me talking in a microphone every two weeks. And we've been doing this for four years now, guys, and continuously for three. But we've had the podcast up and going for four years now. Uh, I just stuck with it, man. A lot of podcasts come and go. There are a lot of outdoor podcasts you may have listened to that don't exist anymore. I'm still here, okay? And uh, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy bringing you some something new and something fresh every week. And um, I just try my best to, to you know, to to sing the Outdoor Nation praises, you know, for the Texas Outdoor Nation and beyond, and just really had a lot of fun doing this show. So whether you're in Texas or outside of Texas, this is this show's for you. Whether you're in the United States or outside of the United States, this show's for you. Our whole goal is to educate, motivate, inspire, um, you know, just, just, just uh, give all the good stuff that has to do with the outdoors and, and, and put it on your heart to go and have the best of the outdoors. That's a whole point of this show so um anyway and it's late here so i apologize i'm a little punchy as far as my <laughs> it's late when i'm recording these bumpers but i do my best thinking at night so that's why i record these at night um 
But anyway, we've got some really, really cool stuff coming up with uh, with what the best the outdoors podcast is doing. You can subscribe free on Podbean, get the app on your phone. Uh, that is free. You can download a new show every two weeks that way. Joe Rogan and a bunch of other guys have their podcasts on here. A bunch of other hunting podcasts are on Podbean as well, which, which is where this is hosted. And uh, then there's also our newsletters. You get our new podcast every two weeks on our newsletters. Uh, fishgame.com. Subscribe to those. I'll talk about that at the end of the show. And uh, just, yeah, lots of good stuff going on here. Just rocking and rolling. I've got an article coming out in the August issue, which will actually be the first of the month when this releases. Uh, and you can check that out. The 10 things to look for to avoid heat stress and heat stroke. Really, really good information. Might help save your life or somebody's life that you love in, uh, in your life. And uh, something to check out there. And a lot of good things going on here. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for helping us uh, you know, get the old Texas fishing game battleship down the, down the highway. Uh, another, another month, another year. And uh, for all your support and reading our stuff and watching our stuff and listening to our stuff, it just means the world to us and uh we love you guys very very much all right so uh wilson-wildlife.com that's wilson-wildlife.com easy to remember website for mike wilson dr mike wilson the guy that i've got on this show here uh dr mike has got a lot of good information to share with us today and i'm so excited to bring a new guest on the show it just makes my day to have uh dr mike join us and just really fun time, uh, great outdoors talk, whether you're listening to this in, in, uh, in the stand hunting exotics or hogs or out on the boat fishing or at the gym working out or walking your dog. I mean, whatever. It's the cool thing about podcasts is you can listen to them anytime they're passive listening. Just really want to thank you guys so much for doing so. All right, here we go, Dr. Mike Wilson. Joining me on the phone, Dr. Mike Wilson. Yes, sir. Do you go by Dr. Mike by or, or, or Dr. <laughs> Dr. Wilson or Mike Wilson or anyway? Mike. Yeah. Mike, not Jeez, Michael. Okay. Just call me Mike. I answer anything. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Well, it's such the thing that I noticed about you when I first ran into you, and I ran into you. I'll just be honest with this. I ran into you when we were um, we met each other across one of these groups that we're both a part of. Uh, that were were right. one of my things that I do is sell exotic deer, and you were interested in buying some deer at some point from me, and I uh, I just kind of got to know you, and I'm like, it's kind of cool. There's a medical doctor, is an emergency room doctor that does deer business and does them both, and does them both what I think very well, and I. I just i thought it was kind of cool man it's uh it is it's, it's, the, the deer business has been uh somewhat of a, a release for me um and kind of stumbled onto it by accident and so certainly <laughs> glad that i did that's now, great it's certainly very very helpful to us no that's great i mean so tell us a little bit about how you got started in the outdoor world with uh with your deer farm situation and um you know your uh sure. your you know your basic just your basic backstory mike yeah sure no problem so I've lived here in Tyler on this property that we're on for about eight years or so. And, um, uh, we're, we're on about, uh, 15, 16 acres here. And the vast majority of it was just kind of heavily wooded, um, kind of back past the backyard here, um, uh, for all these years and I hadn't done a whole lot with it. Um, went through like a bit of a, bit of a crisis, uh, personally, um, uh, we uh, went through a divorce um, and um, ended up staying in my home here. And um, then I remarried, and my uh, my new wife has a, a love for the outdoors, a love for hunting um, that uh, I had not previously experienced in my life. And so I've been a hunter for many, many years, and uh, my animal is a white-tailed deer. I mean, I've hunted a lot of different animals, but nothing gets me fired up like a white tail. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And You're so not alone. <laughs> I started out just wanting that, just wanting to have, you know, some white tail walking around the backyard. You know, like, hey, this would be cool to high fence, whatever's left back there. So let me look into that. And so I started researching that, and I had the biologist come out and do the survey for a release site. And, and uh, you know, I just got stuck. And he's like, have you ever thought about, you know, kind of taking this to a different level instead of just being a release site, being a deer breeder? Oh, well, what is that? You know, what's that cost? Is that a different survey? Is that, you know, oh, it costs the same to get the, the permit from the state and everything. Oh, well, goodness. Well, sure, let's do that. Yeah, <laughs> And so sure. um, I thought, that, hey, that'd be cool. And so uh, I kind of got all uh, started um, the paperwork-wise and went in and told my wife, and she about passed out. She said, you have no <laughs> idea what you're getting into, and she was right. Um, but uh, that was three years ago, uh, three and a half years ago or so, and uh, and here we are, and it has been, uh, you know, 
like anybody who's in the business, lots of ups and downs, but we have really, really enjoyed it. And so um, um, it just has taken me personally to like the next step of my relationship with white tailed deer. Um, sure. And, uh, you know, from a medical standpoint, it's been a lot of fun understanding about, you know, uh, chemistry and the physiology and the health issues related to white tailed deer, both in a macrocosm and a microcosm, my own backyard, so to speak, and then as it relates to the Texas as a state. Um, and so um, that's been a lot of fun, too. Oh, that's great. I mean, what a story and, and just what a backstory as well as far as getting started and something like that. Because we often, a lot of times in, in Texas, especially where there's a lot of deer breeders all over that basically, you know, have different names for their deer and all that other stuff. We think it's just some really rich guy that's at the top of the food chain and that, you know, just does all this for fun and that kind of stuff. You're a really down to earth guy, even though you're an emergency room doctor. It's kind of like me selling deer and working for the magazine. I do both, you know, and you do both medicine right. and, and, uh, and working in the deer business and it's just kind of cool you know to relate to somebody that that's down to earth about all this stuff you know a lot of deer breeders oh, you meet that aren't you. you know what i'm saying you know absolutely like everything we do here we pretty much have to do it by hand we build our own <laughs> you know we do, we do our own fencing yeah. and you know i mean so as of as you know when you get started in the deer business it's not going to be profitable for a good while and right. so we are, you know, we just do as we can. We build new pens as we can, buy new deer as we can, and just kind of building it from the ground up, which, you know, some days can be frustrating, but at other other times it's a, a sense of pride to kind of look out and see what you did. Sure, sure. And the goal, of course, in deer breeding is to grow quality trophy deer for the most part, correct? Yeah, um, we. I get, that's a question I get asked a lot, I especially figured. by folks who don't understand the business. <laughs> right. You know, right. I'm just asking so, this for my listeners, not necessarily for me. I know what the answer is, but go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 uh, I know you certainly do. I think the goals um, should be. You know, this is uh, as you know in our industry, people do have slightly different goals. Um, I my goal personally is not to grow the biggest baddest year. There are health issues that come up um, sure. with. Just do it, just doing that. Now, I'm not saying that anybody who does do that um, has got a, a, a bad way of doing it, but um, our clients are going to be the clients that are looking for um, uh, just a, a beautiful Texas uh, style deer that, yes, absolutely has an amazing looking uh, set of antlers, but also has been bred with. Um, you know, genes that uh, have a history of some longevity, right. um, maybe have a stronger genetic resistance to some of the uh, harsher climates in Texas, um, because I don't want deer that are going to live for two or three years necessarily. Some of our clients are buying buying deer that they want to to continue to spread those genetics on whatever the property is for years to come. No, that's and good. So, that's really know, good. I think that's a good right way to look at it. Thing. Yeah, no, I think the twofold thing is a good idea. And the thing is, I mean, looking back at at all the years that I've been in the deer business and 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 working with people that are that are doing exotics and that kind of stuff, I mean, you know, you learn so much about the biology and about how to hunt them and stuff when you raise them. Is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can't help but learn about it, right? Um, you know, and I'll I will tell you from a the scientist part in me, um, the physician part, there's been a level of frustration because. Uh, it has been surprising to me how it can be such a big business and you can't go find a whole lot of information about it. Right. And quote, ex experts, you may get three different opinions from three different experts. Yeah. It's not knocking those folks. It's just something that hasn't been explored nearly as much, of course, as human biology, <laughs> you know, physiology, medication wise, pharmacology, right. all this different stuff. And so you've seen it on the forums, you know, somebody will throw out a picture or a set of symptoms and you'll get. 30 40 different responses and they can literally be all different so that's right uh, that's right that's, that's one level of frustration that that we are trying to slowly uh drill into using really scientific measures uh as we can blood work x-rays really diagnostic tools ultrasound i just purchased an ultrasound the other day wow um that you know and i do a lot of ultrasound in my clinical practice and so we're going to be doing that with our deer but really trying to have make solid diagnoses instead of just like 
hope somebody's uh looks sick start swinging some darts throw some of this at him and see if it makes right. it feel better see if it helps yeah and the, the one the one exactly the one thing i was thinking about i've watched a bunch of your facebook lives i even watched the one that you did a couple of days ago on the new uh, game cams that you're gonna be carrying on your website right oh yeah um so i, yep. I do keep up with you and i just i'm just fascinated by the way you work and the way you do a hospital shift and then you go over here and do you know deer and then and then like you lost your voice the other day when you were working at the hospital on two 12-hour shifts <laughs> and you're like having the speech to text thing you know it was just kind of funny so it's like that's a guy yeah. that does the renaissance man it's <laughs> terrible you can't talk to people literally like that was the worst laryngitis i've ever had and so yeah that was a tough uh, tough thing to do but it's uh uh, it is fun though. It is fun making the transition. I get to walk out of uh, the the ER and then come home and see my dear. Sure, you know, sure. I try to do like an uh, 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 even if I haven't been here for the day, I try to walk my pins personally. Um, you know, in the evenings, if nothing else, just to kind of uh, have that connection sure. myself because it is kind of a stress relief. I've got a great set of interns that you know manage the day to day. You know, running the things and keep and keep the feed moving and keep their eyes open for for sick deer. But uh, I still try to really have my hand in it um, every day. That's cool. And the thing I like about the genetics that you're raising, uh, there's so many breeders that get into like raising these freak deer and with like the palmated right. antlers and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just kind of think- like that's just that's just not for me but i mean it's for a lot of people and i get that but i've never been about the uber trophy it's just about give me a good solid genetic buck you know that looks got some drop time got some stickers you know whatever but i mean you know i just think that's that's important you know compared to just give me this freak that's a 300 inch deer you know what i'm saying so yeah that's a great point And and i think there's a lot of a lot of hunters out there that um are that way i have I don't know, man. I've probably got 30 uh, or more white-tailed deer mounts hanging in my home in various places. I mean, I've got I've got seven children. I've got a wife who hunts. Like we've got uh, the, our top three are all hunters, so we got lots. Of, our taxidermy bills are huge. But uh, <laughs> my point is, until I started in the deer business, I never once put a tape on a deer. Never okay. once. Okay. Um, I knew how to do it. Um, and, uh, a couple leases where I worked the ranch manager, I'm sorry, where I, I, I hunted the ranch manager required that they measure the deer when you were done, but I, I never cared. I look at the characteristics of the deer. I look at, I mean, I can, especially now being in the business, I can look at a deer and say, man, it's, you know, roughly whatever, 140 or 200 or whatever, but I didn't care. But there's a story behind every one of them. Sure. Out of the 30, say there's 30, I can stand there in front of you and tell you what child was with me, where we were when we shot right. it, um, what the approach was. Did it come in from behind us? I mean, like those are the reasons why we hunt. Those are the reasons why we uh, – that's, that's kind of the mission of Wilson Wildlife is to give other people in life those experiences. And, again, some people literally are all about uh, – uh the the tape measure and that's fine it's just that's not what we do right no i think i think that's the right approach to it and everything so i mean tell me as far as what you feed to grow you know i don't want to say trophy deer but just grow decent sized whitetails and low fence or high fence because uh, there's a big debate out there about yeah. high fence and low fence hunting there's some groups on facebook that are just for low fence i get that um but i mean as far mm-hmm. as what do you what do you do to produce you know uh nice deer sure no that's a great question so i don't think it's fair to the end consumer for you to artificially in any way shape or form inflate what's in your deer pens okay um so uh that's that's just my take i know that there is some of that that goes on out in the industry and that's that's for those folks but the end consumer who you know is in general going to be i think most deer breeders um uh, you know, uh, a customer, bread and butter customer, I think they should get what they pay for. And so yeah. um, we do structure our feeding program uh, based, uh, kind of straddle the fence a little bit because in order to be a good deer breeder, you have to alter things, I think, a little bit because, you know, when, you know, the mamas are um, uh, are fawning and nursing, we try to add, you know, some additional fat and protein to um, to their diet just so that they can um, do the best job that they can do to keep those fawns healthy and keep themselves healthy. Again, we're not adding like, you know, uh, you know, anything artificial, but we'll add, you know, 
um, you know, sources of fat or protein, depending on um, what, what the time of year it is or something like that, to, to try and help uh, those mamas stay healthy. We'll do the same thing for the bucks uh, through and, uh, and post-rut. And a lot of people do this even in their low fence herds. You know, they'll feed them a, a high fi- uh, higher fat content to try and help um, uh, the health of the deer. Because as you know, and, and you may want to get into this a little bit later, I mean, like the, the antler growth, really is based on the body health first right and so we really want to try and keep that that body health um, up and so when a, a buck um, will lose goodness you know 30 to 50 pounds sometimes depending on how it started after we're just chasing you know yeah jason um, deer right jason it, does you know <laughs> sure so so yeah so we, we we try hard for there to be as close as possible and you know, plus we we use brows we use uh, hay those sorts of things but you don't do anybody any good to take a deer that's just been completely you know fed something that they will not get out in the wild and then turn them loose and then they get sick and die right um, and so you got to keep that into account so body health being the most important thing before you get you know big antlers okay that's good to know that's good to that know. is enormous and i think so many people don't understand that um, maybe even in, in and out of, uh, the, the deer industry, you've got to absolutely, um, devote all your energy into the health of the deer first. So they a, will a, not produce those antlers that everybody's looking for without their body being healthy first. So the, as a physician, you say that's deer wellness. Would that be right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. That's that's right. That's right. You. Good exercise program, balanced okay. diet, plenty right. of sleep, <laughs> plenty of sleep, all so, that stuff. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Get your Vitamins, minerals, you know, yeah. all those kinds of things. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, do you believe a lot in these? Uh, I know protein obviously is important for antler growth and that kind of stuff. But I mean, how about um, these trophy rocks and that kind of stuff that's out there? Uh, minerals yeah. and stuff like that. You know. That's tough. I think minerals in general, yes, are important. Now, I'll be the first to say that, uh, you know, uh, though I'm, I'm a physician, I'm not a veterinarian, but I do know minerals, um, uh, you know, as far as bone deposition, when you've got, uh, you know, uh, calcium and uh, supplements and all that sort of stuff for any mammal, I think is going to be very similar. And so, yes, if you can increase the uh, available minerals to the animal, and I don't mean like by, you know, sneaking it in or force feeding it, but, you know, uh, I, we approach everything from kind of like a Christian standpoint. Sure. So good sure. Lord, you know, put it within their bodies that they uh, are in need of a, right. you know, something. They've got a desire to go and, 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 and seek that out. And so we have uh, extra mineralization uh, or, excuse me, mineral sources available to them. We have uh, mineral additives you can put in their uh, water. Um, electrolytes are a big, big, big deal this time of year, um, which is their prime prime growing season for antlers. But it's also, you know, one of the most stressful insects because of the heat. And right. So you keep their sodium, potassium, the chloride levels all balanced as well. Then that helps with your, uh, your uh, mineral deposition uh, or the mineral deposit that you're really wanting to be devoted to um, antler growth keeps them available and, and ready to go. Um, right. You know, as you know, one of the worst things that can happen to an animal or a deer just before or during um, your antler growing season is a fracture of any kind, even a small one. Okay. Um, because um, the, the cells that are responsible for bone repair are going to start diverting the calcium, uh, for example, which is really the major building block, um, uh, for, for bone repair to fixing that fracture. Okay. So even if they broke like a, a foot <laughs> or a right. toe, that can really have a profound effect on what they're going really? to Okay. So if they're injured in any way, any part of their body, not just their horns, if they're in velvet. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And so you don't get that, that, that diverts the calcium deposits away from the antlers and to the site of the injury until, okay. you know, the body gets the signal that, okay, everything's done here. Right. We can go back to, you Throwing know, antlers. putting the excess up yeah. there on the head. Okay, that's cool. No, this is fascinating stuff for us to learn because, you know, like I say, some of this I know already, but a lot of it I just think is you're taking a holistic approach to how deer, and and I mean this for, because I've never been a big trophy, trophy, trophy guy, but I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm really big about how to grow deer in a low fence situation and a high fence situation, quality deer that you want to come back to and that Mm -hmm. you can breed well and that kind of stuff. So I don't want people to misunderstand Mm -hmm. my talk on this because I never have been about, you know, 
know, it's all about the trophy, but it's, it's about, you know, in some cases we can help, you know, even in a low fence scenario grow, you know, quality deer. I just did an article uh, that I edited in the uh, Lone Star Bow Hunter Association. And he talked a whole lot about water. You know, it just, just right. it's not all about just the minerals and the protein. Just have a good water source there to keep that deer healthy. And I mean, that's kind of what you're alluding to as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, this time of year, especially, um, you, if you've seen, and I'm, you know, maybe, maybe a shameless plug, but you've seen one of the, 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 the products I push a lot right now. Yes. Something called the Guzzler, you know, yeah, the gu- and, Guzzler, I'm more, and, I, and I throw that out because I'm seeing more videos of other folks, other deer people who more and more are putting water sources right in their feed pens, which I think is awesome. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's brilliant. I think, uh, you know, having, um, uh, you know, the food and water there for the deer uh, is a, a great approach, no matter if you use my product or something else. Um, but I, you know, being what I'm in, in my mid forties here and I've hunted since I was, you know, early teens, uh, for years, everybody's just talked about for decades, feeders, corn feeders, just put your feet out, put your feet out. And, right. you know, and that market has been saturated and I don't know that anybody ever, you know, still here in some recent years has really started saying, hey, let's get some water out there for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's right yeah. now, you know, because um, it's still blasted hot. So that's an important yeah. component. You're absolutely right. That's why I wanted to, to bring that up and get that out of you because I knew that would be something that you recommended because I didn't realize until I started listening to a lot of podcasts about, you know, deer growth and antlers and, and how, uh, how, how quality deer grow uh, and then healthy deer grow that they need a good water source. And what we have on the place that mm-hmm. I hunt, I hunt on a low fence uh, area by, that backs up to a cemetery, so I call it the cemetery stand uh, in, uh, in my part of Texas. And basically it's a low fence. And what I do is I have a, we have a donkey on that property and I, we've got a water trough for him and then I also we kind of you know co do that for the you know co co uh, purpose that for the deer as well and then I, I run uh, a little mm-hmm. bit of protein and some corn and run a game camera out there with the cellular function like you were talking about on your Facebook live where I can basically see real time mm-hmm. what's coming in what time they're coming in and get the hogs out of there and all that other stuff um, but I mean yeah. I, I think that's great I mean I just I, I honor you for uh, bringing that up because I think it's something a lot of hunters look over is even if you bring water in like the roto guzz that you that you sell uh dr mike you know one of those things that you know basically helps the overall health of the population because they have an ample water source and then you have a rain collection system as well with that roto guzz and i know that's not a cheap uh piece of equipment to buy but i mean it it can last you forever you know for as long as you're alive you know because it's built to to stay in one place (laughs) and and it's roto molded and you know it's 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 just Mm -hmm. built built tough you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, absolutely. The um, uh, the 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 part that I I think is the coolest, of course, is the rain collection feature. It's a naturally renewable source of water collection. Now, in the absolute dead of summer, and I've you know, and I'll say this: we've got some down on a ranch that I hunt in Junction, um, a property that we own down there. Um, Mid August two years ago was the first time we had one run dry that where we weren't having to actually. Like the first time we actually had to artificially go out and put some in. Sure. It collects a lot of water. And so having um, the naturally renewable source of water where you're not having to haul it out there all the time, um, you know, it's uh, though it is made of plastic, somebody could, could make an argument that that's not great for, you know, the environment. But it is, like you said, it will last an absolute lifetime, and it does collect the water for you and um, uh, therefore using the rain for the animals um, uh, right off the bat. And so it's good for them. It's good for you. You don't have to haul it out there to right. save your site during water and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, plus we've started uh, adding um, minerals to the water source as well and electrolytes. So, oh. as you know, probably in the, in the, in your deer business, I mean, you can put electrolytes in your water um, like Gatorade for the, for the deer. Right. And so we do, we do both in the roto guys. That's cool. That's really cool. So if you want to look at what a roto goes looks like, you can go to the Wilson Wildlife Facebook page, right? Or the Facebook group. I forget which yep. you've got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're both. So there's actually roto goes, uh, um, Facebook page as well. Okay. And then, uh, the Wilson wildlife, uh, uh, Facebook page as well. Um, Wilson dash wildlife.com is our uh, website there. So you can get it anywhere, uh, um, to, to look about it, uh, look at it and, and read about it. Um, and you know, I'll say that I would love to love to sell the product, but truly, 
if you don't have some sort of source of water, that's that's key these days. Sure. Um, I don't care. There's a gazillion different kinds of corn out there. I don't care what kind of corn you put out, what kind of trackers you use. Every animal on the planet needs water, and they know how to find it. You want to attract animals <laughs> to your hunting spot, put right. some water out there. You want to take care of your deer this time of year, put some water out. Some yeah, way, that's good. That, and I think it's so important to say, Dr. Mike, and I'm glad you said that because that that rings home to what, what I try to do as a hunter is – the care for that wildlife, not just to go hunt it, but yeah. also for the existence of that species in that area in the future. I mean, just the, the conservation element of it, you know what I'm saying? It's important as well. So, so, so true. That's, yeah. that's where we really get derailed with some of our, you know, anti hunter counterparts that yeah. people just think we're slaughtering animals out there. And, um, it's just so not the case. Um, yeah. we really need to, uh, we have a stewardship that we need to take care of, so to speak. And that, that's a spiritual thing, too. I mean, God gave us this, this property, this land, this lease, this ranch to take care of and be a good steward over it. And, I mean, I just, not to get too spiritual, but basically, you know, just talking about the, the things that we're entrusted with in our lives, you know, we need to take care of. And that one of those things is the white-tailed deer population in Texas, you know. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there, too. And if you want to see more deer, you know, feed and water right, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, that's just part of, part of the plan too. And that's something that I try to, um, I'm trying to do in this new area that I'm hunting this year is, uh, just trying to increase. And I'm using actually, I don't know if you've heard of this, Dr. Mike, I'm using a, a scent this year and I'm not doing a plug or anything for them because I just got this and I'm just starting to use it, but it's a synthetic scent by a company called Buck Fever and they're big in Michigan. They're really big in Michigan. And okay. um, they're basically uh, a synthetic scent that does not spoil. So you have something like, you know, a spray, a, a fake, you know, like a synthetic rub or, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Mm-hmm. A, a scrape, a rub, uh, you know, dough and heat, that kind of stuff. They're all synthetic scents. They don't smell like anything, mm-hmm. but the deer can smell them. And basically, it's just interesting to try something like this because I've always been a big, you know, Tink 69 kind of guy, you know. They, but the thing yep. is, with that being organic, it's it, it also can decompose, you know. Sure, sure, absolutely. And anybody who's ever accidentally left uh, left a bottle of that in there, they're blind uh, over a summer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they it's pretty rank. It up. Yeah. <laughs> At the first of the hunting season, wish they hadn't. Um, yeah. So you're absolutely right. That'd be really interesting to to try. Um, you know, getting that stuff. I'm no expert in that, but I can imagine getting the uh, the real stuff is uh, quite a process anyway. Yeah, it um, is for and, sure. And <laughs> Labor intensive, stressful on animals. Right. But uh, if you could create a product that really uh, works well and synthetic, uh, I think more power to you. That would be a, a, a great product yeah. to have. It doesn't spoil or anything. And the thing that I um, I'm interested in, like I sprayed some on a tree by where my feeder is, and I've just got a hanging feeder in this one little area that I hunt by the cemetery, and basically. I had rubs on the tree within two weeks of, of, you know, decent sized deer basically. And and what they're doing is when it rains, it reactivates and it's just kind of interesting. I'm just playing with it right now just to kind of see what brings it in. Because when, when it, when it rains, that scent gets reactivated and that's how it's reactivated is by water. And uh, so it lasts a lot longer than traditional, you know, traditional, uh, you know, organic scents. So I'm just playing with it. I just thought I mentioned it to you on the show and just uh, let you know it's what I'm projecting with. So, that that's a that's a cool sounding product. How often do you have to reapply, or, or do you know? No, I mean I'm not I'm not 100 percent an expert on it yet, as far as that goes. But I mean yeah, I know that yeah. during deer season they've got a, a really pre and post, you know, a scrape, and then they've got a a doe mm-hmm. and heat, and then they've got a forehead gland. And I learned about forehead mm. glands a while back because that's the way deer communicate with each other. A lot of times is through the forehead gland, mm. if what I understand right. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've heard that myself. I'm, so, but, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it is interesting. I mean, there's so much. Like for instance, I, I when I started deer hunting, bow hunting for deer, I was with at, at the time he was my insurance agent. Now he's gone on to be a field producer for a really big uh, hunting TV show on uh, I think the Outdoor Channel or Pursuit or um, or Sportsman's. I'm not sure oh, which cool. one, but anyway, he's a good dude. But he taught me how to bow hunt, and he basically did a blood tracking dog service. And what he did was he mm. believed, and this was still a theory, and I'm not sure 100 percent on this, but he could he had a Bavarian mountain hound, and basically he believed that there the theory was true that the deer when they are are, are running you know running off after a shot uh, emit like a like a, a hormone out of their feet, 
And that's how his Bavarian mm. mountain hand, hound could pick it. As long as that deer did not go through the water, he could pick up that scent mm. on its feet that it emitted when it was shot. So it's more that's interesting stuff, you know, that, that's more theory than, than uh, but I've just always been fascinated with that because a deer has so many different receptors and their, their, their nose is, you know, so much more mm-hmm. sensitive than our nose and, and they smell things that we can't smell, but that, that's how they communicate, mm-hmm. you know, the way we can't communicate. But I'm, it's a fast, whitetail is just a fascinating creature, isn't it? Man, it is. And it, it is, uh, it is hard to separate truth from fiction like you're talking about uh, as you were talking about that you know i was thinking about the more i have gotten into this and the more i've hunted the less i think i know <laughs> you know you, hear, you, know, you, so you know you hear all these things growing up oh the deer you know oh, they, they caught your scent and they took off and you know and you know i have shot deer uh you know frankly right after uh i had you know a kid just had just had to get out of the blind and pee right there at the bottom of the blind or you know uh (laughs) with the wind blowing in the wrong direction or pouring down rain or the wind blowing on just 90 miles an hour you know the deer are going to come out when it's raining and uh, you know who knows man (laughs) yeah some of that stuff (laughs) is still speculation um, but there's so much we don't know but you're right the more that we do it there's a lot of times we don't know what we thought we knew you know (laughs) i mean so yeah yeah, it's it's uh, it's so true, um, but still, it's such a fascinating creature. Uh, it's it's my favorite. I mean, I got some, I got a, a good number of species under my belt, and man, I love hunting whitetail. It's awesome. Yeah, they're they're very wary species, and and you know another one that um, as far as something I've been trying here lately is, uh, and I talked about this on a previous show. Uh, you know, in live sale, I end up with some of the meat from the exotics, and I've been eating axis here lately. And, and then, oh, you know, yeah. I just want to talk about exotics for a minute, but basically, uh, my, my friend that owns the live sale business has Neil guy in the freezer. And so mm-hmm. Texas, you know, besides being an awesome whitetail destination, obviously tons of exotics that you can hunt year round. I mean, this time I'm selling loads after loads of access deer to ranches that are stocking their ranch mm-hmm. and doing, um, you know, doing more stuff with that as far as getting, uh, getting, getting people to come hunt. And, uh, I, I explained it mm-hmm. to a guy from Kentucky the other day that called me on some graphic design work the other day. And he said, it's kind of odd the way the exotic business works. Cause you basically all do this on the underground on Facebook or elsewhere, you know, wherever. And, mm-hmm. um, and then we, mm-hmm. we all network and stuff like that there. We buy and sell and trade and do stuff like that. And then nobody wants to know where the animals are coming from because you don't want to, you know, let the hunter know that you bought this animal in just for them. You know, I guess is the best way to say it. Right. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, you know, there's, there's, uh, like anything else, there's tons of controversy, yes. tons, tons of opinions out there. Um, but I think as, uh, a guy who's done a lot of exotic hunting in Texas, emphasizing the benefits, you know, when you look at it at a 10,000 foot level right. of, of exotic hunting is, is where the meat and potatoes are, you know, yeah. um, you're never going to please the guys who, who, you know, get fired up about, you know, well, if you really wanted to, to hunt that no guy, why didn't you go to, you know, wherever they came from right, you know, Africa, or whatever, over yeah. in Iran, you know, hunting, right. you know, Ibex or where, shirt, wherever, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I mean, there's a gazillion reasons why I think the biggest often for most hunters is, is going to be cost, but how many species, I don't know the answer, but I know if, I know it's a true statement, but how many species of exotic animals do we hunt in Texas that are on the endangered list in their native land? Yes. Yeah. Know? Axis, um, black buck. I mean, just to name a few, uh, oryx, um, I believe works. Yeah. I know for sure there's more works here in Texas than there are in Little yeah. And you remember the big debate that was going on. You were around when this was happening, I'm pretty sure, in the exotic world when uh, it was uh, Dama Gazelle, it was Attics, and it was uh, Oryx, Scimitar Horn Oryx, that were on the endangered list. And then Ted Nugent and a bunch mm-hmm. of other people kind of started a movement to get them off and basically made the point to the government and the governing bodies that basically were making that law about making them endangered is that because of hunting, we have more of them than we've ever had. And they're not an endangered mm-hmm. species as long as they have a value. And that's a big point I make about every time on the show about Africa. If there is no value, mm-hmm. there is no animal. You know, if, if it pays, it stays right. kind of thing. 
uh, that I heard on another show the other day. Uh-huh. And basically, you know, it's it's to the proli- the um, prolification, I guess is the right word, of that species to survive and thrive is because of hunting, you know. And the anti-hunters don't get right. that a lot of times. But I think it needs to be even said within our own community that listens to the show, for instance, that, you know, that's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and, and even other people who don't... Uh, you know, they don't even live in the great state of Texas. Right. They don't quite get the, yeah. the exotic thing, but I mean, we do. There is a humongous conservation piece, and I know anti hunters don't want to hear that. And yes, uh, again, on the on the micro level, when uh, I go out and shoot an orcs, well, it wasn't conservation for that animal. Absolutely, that animal gave up its life. Sure. Uh, you know, for my sport, I don't hide that. I don't uh, try and say that that's not the case. I think uh, we lose credibility when we try to, to dodge the literally that bullet right okay sure. we hunt for sports we hunt for food um but i think most of us really really a lot of folks hunt for sport okay i mean there are some folks out there that yes feed literally feed their family <laughs> with, the, with the deer they, they would, kill yeah, they exactly. may starve to death <laughs> yeah right right, right <laughs> you know right, yeah. but what's that i said no you're right you're right about that for sure i would just make yeah. i was increasing your it, point there yeah so yeah so i think we gain credibility if we own that you know and so um, because we're never going to lose, we're never going to win people over uh, by getting them to think, oh yeah, that is a great sport. So that 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 cows out of the barn to begin with. <laughs> but um, understanding that, yes, that one animal um, was hunted um, on a, a, a high fence ranch somewhere, of whatever, ten thousand acres or something. But that ranch's mission there, you know, they've got two hundred oryx, all right, and they don't hunt. Um, the orcs that are whatever a good mature orc, and I don't know good. I, I've picked on orcs for some reason, but whatever mature orcs age is, you know, they let them grow to maturity. They feed them good feed. They let them breed, and then they're harvested. Yes, for sport and yes for food. Um, but that's not how it's done out in nature. You harvested, you know. I mean, how many animals will intentionally? How many animal species intentionally kill? the young in order to send the mother into heat uh, so that they can just breed. That's a good um, point. You know, how many animals uh, species are poached severely in their native, native lands. Right. So hunting, yes, as an industry, that's where the conservation or one of the parts where the conservation comes in. The anti hunters want to focus on the fact that yes, we kill animals. Well, right. that is a fact. We can't deny that. Yeah. But nature kills animals. You know, the thing that I argue with about right. that is the fact, like you were talking about the, you know, killing the young to get, the, so the, the, the female goes into heat. I mean, you know, the thing is nature is, is the cruelest of them all. I mean, if you've ever seen right. a, uh, you know, a National Geographic, you know, when, one of those shows, you know, see a lion, you know, grab a gazelle and, and just tear it apart, you know, l- you know, limb by limb, right. you know, basically while it's still li- alive. <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's pretty gory, but I mean, that, that exists this because that's yeah. just the way what is is you know that's just the way nature works yep. and i mean so i, I yep. just i think what the hunting community has done now the thing that it kills me about the hunting community as much as i love that we've done a lot for conservation and the prolification of the species and stuff like that uh the thing i don't like is the fact that we can't all get along and i understand we're going to have some issues but you have people that are anti-high fence and pro-high fence you have people that are you know without high fences we wouldn't have the exotic population especially the access population we right. do in texas you know that has been yeah. a, it's pro own um, prolific thing but i mean the thing is i like i wrote an article i talked about this a couple of times of the show the lone star bow hunters association magazine and if anybody wants a copy of that magazine you can uh, uh drop me a line dustinsprojects.com through my website i'll send you a copy for free uh dustinsprojects.com but basically um i wrote on there it all matters uh the people that shoot traditional bows don't necessarily need to make fun of the people that shoot compound bows seeing that they're they're hunting with trailer training wheels and the people that hunt right. with compound bows don't need to make fun of the people that are hunting with cro- i mean with crossbows and that kind of stuff it's just like there's that division within our community that kind of ruins the sport in a lot of ways because i'm just like we're all you need to unite for the common goal you know that's a great point and it, we see it every day on our own excuse me on our own forums right um and i don't understand because in the end everybody does fight a good fight vehemently for for hunting um and so just w- by the same token that we we want to have be respected by the anti-hunters why we cannot ask the same of each other is kind of beyond me yeah. i posted the other day on one of one of our forums uh 
oh, what was it? Oh, it's a, 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 a thousand pound road feeder. You know, you pull it behind a, a, an ATV or a truck or something like that. And, you know, just put it up there. Hey, I got one. Anybody wants it. Let me know. Right. And, uh, a couple of, you know, a couple of knuckleheads jumped on there. I'm like, oh, well, um, we don't need corn in our roads. Um, where we hunt, it's called free chase. You might uh-huh. look into it or something like yeah, that. I mean, just smart. like, yeah. I don't know who these people are. I've never had, I've never so much as met them. Right. Like they just without provocation jumped in to start a fight. And that is, uh, it's self-destructive for the, for the, the whole process, you know? It is. Um, and so, uh, ethics, there are ethical issues, there are legal issues. And I think if you are ethical and you're legal, um, then, um, we should take care of one another and there's enough things to fight about in the world. You know, we need a little peace. <laughs> sure. No, I know. Again, we all get along, you know, like the old Ron, Ronnie King thing. Right. So right. I, I kind of just always allude back yeah, to that. Can't we all get along? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Wilson wildlife gear, which you have your own website, you ship, I believe nationwide and a lot of the smaller items, correct? Yeah, so we ship uh we ship as anything that we can put on a UPS truck, we will certainly ship nationwide. Okay, cool. Um and then um a lot of our bigger items we have found um that we're getting kind of big enough to where we kinda of have routes. Like if you don't have to have it tomorrow, oh yeah, yeah. I know I'm gonna have a truck going truck going through central Texas in the next week or two. Sure. So you wanna buy two or three feeders from me, I'll ship them down there to you uh, free of charge. Oh, cool. Um and so we, we batch all of our orders that way. And I always try and put in our ads, you know, we ship to free for free within the state of Texas. Um but really it'd be you know you know, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, a lot of that too. And so, um, from the gear business side, my big thing is, and it sounds kind of cliche, but it's customer service. I'm sure. so fed up of going to places to spend a lot of money and nobody really cares, yeah. you know, buy it or don't, or right. they don't know about the product, you know, so many places that sell, uh, all seasons feeders or Texas wildlife supply feeders or whatever, or the guzzler or whatever, I mean, they're the Ace Hardware that sells plumbing parts and electrical parts, and they sell, um, you know, whatever, uh, furniture dollies and yeah. everything else. So <laughs> right. this is my thing. This is what we do, okay. all right? You know, they may know something about it. They may not know something about the product. They may know nothing about the product. Right. Um, so they sit them out there in front of their little grocery store or whatever, buy them or don't. Um, I do – I try and do – uh, not podcasts, but videos or something to try yeah, and Facebook help people and stuff understand like yeah. the different, yeah, the different types of feeders, the different, you know, things to look for in a feeder, you know, buy from me or don't, but certainly be educated um, when you do it. And so I think customer service is a big part of it. Education is a big part of it. Um, and so we certainly want to try and take care of our customers. Um, it's a big deal to me because it's a, it's a, a bone I like to pick with other companies. Sure. Uh, you buy a car. I mean, you spend a lot of money, and people don't give a hoot. Yeah, you're just a number <laughs> in a lot of cases. And I mean, it, so it's nice important. to go. It's nice to go somewhere where you're cared for. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, that's that that already makes me yeah. feel good. You know, that y'all care that much, right? And you've got anything from all seasons feeders, Texas Wildlife Supply feeders. You've got parts, accessories, hog uh, lights. You've got um, hog hunting lights, um, barbecue backyard yep. stuff. Um, there's just a ton of stuff on here. Uh, laser engravings of some of your deer, um, and, um, yeah. the swag shop, you know, and, and then you've got some Athlon optics and, uh, some other stuff here, uh, survival gear and that kind of stuff. I just, I think it's a great, well-rounded, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, store. I mean, for the most part, as far as, uh, catering that. to the hunter and the, and the outdoorsman for sure. Well, certainly appreciate that. We're slowly, we, we have the structure up. We're going to have a, uh, an in-person store here for too long. Oh, cool. Building and we're, you know, yeah. So it'll be here in Tyler, um, for those that want to come by. And so that's, uh, just up until now, just exclusively online. Um, but people do come by. It's amazing. People come by. Well, you know, we, we sell double down deer feed. And so we keep tons of the deer feed, uh, sure. here as well. And so folks in uh, East Texas will come pick it up here and, and then come and see the deer and, and that sort of thing. And so um, uh, I, that's one thing I would like to, you know, tell you and your listeners is uh, so much of this is about education. Yes. Uh, people are welcome to come to Wilson Wildlife and come take a baby deer. I mean, it will change your entire perspective of the business, I think. Sure. Uh, especially if you've got questions about it. We're, we love to educate folks and we love to give them an experience, you know, 
how often before you kind of get into business? I mean, how many people in the world do you think get to hold a <laughs> hold a baby deer or yeah. give an animal cracker to a, a buck with horns? You know, uh, and, you know, hard horns. So um, anyway, uh, it's a great experience and we're people to our ranch. Oh, that's super. That's good to know that you welcome people to the ranch and you've got a great online store and and you ship and you're in the Tyler area, correct? Or Northeast Texas, I should say, yep. right? Okay. Yep, we're we're in Tyler, um, uh, North Tyler. So certainly uh, contact us if uh, anybody wants to come out, and we'll get you get you uh, set up and make sure you have a good experience. Okay, cool, perfect. You know, you're you're easy to find, easy to find online. Wilson Wildlife dot com, and um, there's a lot of good things going on. I really appreciate you. How else can people find you just by searching for Mike Wilson on Facebook, or how else do you want people to contact you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, our live has Facebook page, uh, Mike Wilson. Um, I mean, it's under my, my name, but actually the, the Mike Wilson Facebook page is really the gear, the gear page. Um, sure. we, uh, I run a, a, a private group, um, um, uh, uh, deer and gear is what it's called. Oh, cool. Um, and so people can join uh, our private group. Uh, we put, uh, specials there. I run specials that are just for our group members, um, for products, um, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, semen straws, um, we're going to do like, a um, uh, uh, possibly even like a, a fawn, uh, sale at some point in time. So, um, you can do that. Uh, they can reach me at 903-546-5995. If you want to call text, however you want, send, send a smoke signal. Always like, we'll, we want to be convenient, to, and, uh, and help the customer, uh, in any way that we can. That's cool. That's really cool to, to know. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mike. I really appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you. We appreciate uh, your support and uh, hope you have a good one. And there he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mike Wilson, Wilson Wildlife, Wilson Wildlife Gear. It's wilson-wildlife.com. I'm going to put all of his information and all of the website information on the in the show notes or on the blog post so you can sit there and click on it and go directly to it so you don't have to remember to write anything down. I try to do that as much as I can on these shows where I can remember it uh, to write it down after I get done recording. So, uh, But like I said, guys, I, there's a local company here that I work for, uh, one of my clients that I do in my outdoor business stuff. I do... Um, uh, they they have they carry all seasons feeders and they carry um, you know a wide variety of other other knives and all kinds of different stuff there and uh, I can just speak to the testament of of how high quality some of the stuff that Mike uh, Mike Wilson carries on uh, Wilson Wildlife Gear uh, the store I mean there's there's hog lights there's um, barbecue pits there's uh, feeders there's optics there's survival gear there's there's just a little bit of everything um swag and engravings and stuff like that so anyway I, there's a lot to be said uh for for a guy that puts his heart out there as far as putting his his love for customer service and education out there as much as somebody like dr mike does and um you know i just can't speak enough high recommendation about the roto guz uh which is the um the water you know the rainwater collecting system and the, the watering system for your deer um, and, and just, just having a good water source out there, having a good, uh, healthy deer population, not just feeding corn, but feeding protein as well. Um, whether that be in block form or pellets or whatever the case may be through protein feeders. Uh, there's just a lot of different things that we talked about this show that you can kind of, um, you know, notate to your own deer hunting or, or any kind of wildlife hunting uh, adventures. And uh, that's one thing that I try to do. And for me, you know, I come from a different part of the industry than a lot of typical media guys do, being that I buy and sell and trade, that I'm a deer trader, basically, that I buy and sell and trade exotics and uh, and other wild, wild game species in the uh in the industry and uh that's kind of a unique thing you get from your buddy dustin here because uh not everybody you know in media that that you hear you know clamoring on on a podcast uh has that kind of experience but basically what i'm saying is there's a lot of opportunity out there there's a lot of ranches that are stocking their ranches with high quality animals and there are a lot of great hunting opportunities for good trophy animals for you to go hunt and just meet animals and get you an axis doe you know get you a a, a fallow a spike or a you know a, 
a nice a fella buck or a psycho buck or, a, or an axis buck or a neil guy or a, you know water buffalo and there's a uh, one of the ranches that i'm i'm connected with db hunting ranch here in central texas has got some specials right now going on you can head over to dbhunting.com to go check them out um dbhunting.com and, and basically they just have a, a handful of things that i've been putting up on their website of things that are on special water buffalo oryx um I'm trying to think what else uh, went on the chopping block here lately, but uh, there's there's a lot more that's coming down the pike too, and a lot of ranches are stocking up this time of year, uh, which makes my life pretty busy because I'm always selling deer and stuff like that. Besides doing, selling advertising and doing what I do for the magazine, um, but I mean, you know, the the neat thing about all of that is that it all is to benefit you guys that listen to this. It's all to benefit you guys that hunt and fish and. And, uh, and do that and that's one reason why I do as much as I do is it's a life of service it's a life of um of profound service you know of, of gratitude and uh just just you know helping kind of spread the message that uh get your kids outdoors you know I just I finished a, a newsletter tonight before I um before I turned the podcast microphone on to record these bumpers uh with Dr. Mike and you know, I, this was a newsletter I did for Striper Express, which is uh, out of Lake Texoma, you know, Texas-Oklahoma border lake. And, you know, the whole thing is the summer's almost gone. Take your kids fishing. You know, that was our whole point of that newsletter. Um, you know, the, the fact that you've got your fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and all those kind of guys in the outdoors, you know, this time of year is just so important. It's hot. I understand we went fishing back in June and it was miserable because there was no breeze. And I mean, it was just like hot as balls. It was like 105 degrees. Um, and, and it was just crazy. And, but at the same time, I still got outside with my kids, you know, or my kid, my one kid. Um, I still got out there and still made some things happen and, and, um, you know, at least tried to, to put on a good outdoor adventure for my son on a guided trip. And, uh, you know, those times, you know, what Bill was saying in his newsletter, uh, comments was those times aren't always going to be there with your family, you know, with your parents or with your kids or whatever the case may be. People grow older, they, they change, I mean, their interests change, their health changes, whatever the case may be. What I'm saying is capitalize on that now, you know. Uh, if you have something to say to somebody, say it now. Um, if you have something to uh, experience with somebody, like I've been planning a trip for a long time with my dad and my father-in-law to go out to Lake Texoma with my son, I need to get that done, you know. I need to get that done before, you know, the, the opportunity's not there to do it anymore. Uh, my son grow, outgrows, you know, wanted to spend time with his dad and turns into a teenager. Uh, or uh, the case may be where, um, you know, my, my uh, in-law or my dad are, are not able to go anymore. Um, so, I mean, it's just those kind of things. Seize the day is what I'm trying to say. Seize the day and have fun out there. And, uh, and just, you know, the, the outdoors in Texas offer so much to do and, and beyond. I mean, the outdoors of anywhere. There's so much to do. There's shooting sports. There's hunting. There's fishing. There's camping. There's hiking. Uh, there's there's outdoor cooking. I mean, there's whole shows that are dedicated to outdoor cooking. You know, um, so there there there's just a lot of different things that that are they kind of round out everything that 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 makes the outdoors such a great thing and, and God's creation and and we are to be creators and enjoy that creation while we're here. And I think that all comes with uh, enjoying the meat, you know, at, at the end of the fish, you know, that you cook uh, at the end of your trip. Um, there's just something that I try to do when I can't spend time in the outdoors is I try to experience the outdoors through the bounties of the outdoors, if you will. My point here is that there's so much to experience. There's so many people in your life to experience that with. I just have one son, you know, Jackson, and he's turning 10 next month. Actually, this month when this releases, uh, he turns 10 on August 14th. So big happy birthday. Shout out to Jackson. And, you know, just so much, so much to be thankful for having him in my life. And, um, you know, having my dad still, having my father-in-law still, where we can go do, talk about hunting and fishing. And when we're not talking about it, we're doing hunting and fishing stuff. And, um, that's just, you know, that's where my heart is, is just in, in those experiences with the, those that we love. And, uh, that's where I think, you know, we should at least consider our heart being, it's not all about just a, a giant trophy, 300 inch deer. 
it's it's about the grind to get there it's about the experience to get there like dr mike and i were talking about it's about the um philosophy and the the the, the god's creation and the the miracles that exist out there in nature uh in the water in the woods um you know there's just so much to be thankful and grateful for guys and that's kind of i always try at the end of every one of these podcasts as you guys know if you've listened for a while that's great but if you, you're you're new i always try to bring home our topic whatever we talked about in the show at the end of the show and uh just give you give you some food for thought you know just give you something to to, to chew on while you uh wait for the next show to come out in two more weeks and uh next show i'll have out is the icast show that i recorded solo uh in my hotel room uh at icast and i think you'll like that as well another fishing show uh after this hunting show so uh also big shout out to a couple of sponsors i wanted to give some love to air force air guns hunting air guns uh, hunting with air guns big bore uh, small bore uh, shooting target shooting with air guns is clean it's it's fun it's great to get kids involved in um, and we're not, not, not talking about your little red rod or bb gun either we're talking about you know big time big bore air guns that can uh, you know blow a blow a hole through uh, through a car you know <laughs> uh, with the, with the slugs that they shoot and then uh, you know the pellets and the bullets that uh, the, the slugs that uh, the the small caliber uh, air guns use it uh, Air Force air guns check those guys out check out Okuma Okuma fishing um, they've got a lot of stuff going on with what they've got um, they've got a new bait category and they've got a new a bunch of new innovations that they had at ICAST this year. Uh, also want to give a shout out to uh, Wilson Wildlife, of course, uh, Wilson Wildlife Gear, again, Wilson, Wilson-Wildlife.com, um, and then uh, the Rust Game Place and Meat Market, they ran an ad with us back in August uh, for, uh, no, it was actually back in May, I think it was, for Father's Day. But uh, anyway, the fantastic smoked meats and cheeses, guys. If you've not checked out the Rust Game Place and Meat Market and the Rust uh, Meat Market and Wild Game Processing, for your game processing, there are new Brownfuls and Clear Springs right across from Clear Springs Restaurant. I think that's, I'm saying that right, or, or close. It's in Clear Springs uh, right there on 46 and New Brownfuls going towards Seguin. Um, really, really, really high quality smoked meats. You can order their product online, have it shipped anywhere else in the United States. I'll put a link to their stuff on our on uh, the show notes. Uh, therustgameplace.com. That's therustgameplace.com. And um, you can check them out. Uh, they've got great smoked meats, smoked cheeses, um, specialty seasonings. Rust dust is their specialty seasoning. And then uh, smoked black pepper. And I use the smoked black pepper on my salad. I use it on just about everything. I absolutely love that smoked black pepper. It's, it's actually black pepper that has a smoky flavor to it. It's incredible. <laughs> so anyway, I had to give them a big shout out. Um, and then let me think who else. DB Hunting Ranch. Uh, if you're looking at doing some... Uh, some hunting uh, opportunities here as hunting season emerges here uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, they We kind of start our hunting season, I guess, in August is typically when, the, when that gets started. And then September through October and that kind of stuff as we go into the colder months. Um, our exotic hunting season, which has no season really, but we call it a hunting season, is typically when uh, when they get really busy. and. So uh, give them a call, it's dbhunting.com, and um, just a shout out to everybody that's made this show possible. I appreciate you guys all uh, that are listening, and uh, just just so much to be thankful for, guys. I've got a whole list of gratitude for what you guys do as far as listening and telling a friend and uh, spreading the good word about the Best of the Outdoors podcast, and um, checking out our website, fishgame.com, if you've not done so already, as I say every show. Check out our newsletters. They're three times a week. You get a Tuesday, Tactical Tuesday. You get a Wildlife Wednesday. And you get a Thursday, Texas State of the Outdoor Nation. Those are three weekly newsletters you get. You also have the Whitetail National, the Turkey National, the um, Hog Wild, a uh, wide variety of different um, uh, specialty newsletters, Sharks and Surf, that kind of stuff um, coming out. And then some email blasts from some of our sponsors and partners that we work with awesome stuff so just get on that mailing list you'll get all that information and then also uh check out our bookstore uh, we've got kayak books we've got texas reds which is a redfish book we've got uh saltwater strategies there's uh jester moore's hog wild uh forward by ted nugent uh, a great book i'm reading that right now as a matter of fact 
um, and a wide variety of other books, t-shirts. Uh, oh, that's the other thing. I keep forgetting on this thing podcast. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, Texas Fishing Game Collaboration Store with Frio Coolers, all right? Um, you can check that out on our website at fishgame.com. Go to the store section and scroll down to the bottom, and then, or just, just go to the drop-down menu down at the bottom. Uh, tons of stuff. Soft side coolers, t-shirts, uh, or fish, performance fishing shirts is what I'm trying to say. Uh, drinkware, cups, uh, 24-7s, uh, all kinds of different uh, Texas Fishing Game logoed. Uh, stuff. So you've got things from um, from drinkware to coolers to um, you know just a wide variety of different things you've got to check out. And I've got banners running on our website that I myself, yours truly, built um, for our uh, for our, our internet um, site for our website, and basically have um, have those running too. So you can check out those web banners and click over and see the store itself, or you can check out. Um, fishgame.com and just go to the store category and it'll have the, the TFNG Frio cooler store. So anyway, be sure to check that out. I will put a link to that in the description as well. Um, just to go check it out and order some stuff from Frio. It really, really, really have some good stuff. So anyway, thank you guys so much for telling a friend. Thank you so much for spreading the good news about the best of the outdoors podcast for sharing this show. However you found us. Thank you so much for doing so. Have an awesome day in the outdoors. We'll see you next time.